Yeah, I got a um, three Hasbro games, uh, like board games, on a uh, on GBA here. Yeah, and like a one combo pack thing. Yeah, Operation Most Rapid Simon. We should probably just do that as one video. But and just say see, it's like a, a GBA board game, whatever. Yeah. Uh, next to operation, it says skill game. What? Well, if you uh, read it, uh, the others aren't skill game. The top one is operation in the in the uh, art on the front of it. It's operation, and then mousetrap, and then Simon. If you read it all together, which I almost did when I first saw it, I was going to read it as operation mousetrap Simon, <laughs> which sounds like some uh, World War Two war game. Yeah, this operation. is operation mousetrap Simon. And it's like, Mousetrap Simon is the code word, like, uh, Alpha Bravo Mousetrap Simon, Zulu. <laughs> yeah. Oscar. <laughs> okay. Operation Mousetrap Simon is something that took place in France in 1935 or something. I don't know. <laughs> Saving Private Simon. <laughs> If there was ever like a like a garbage uh, reboot of uh, Saving Private Ryan, yeah, I just change his name to Simon. I just realized what that would be like, and I wonder if Hollywood's gonna do that soon. <laughs> yeah. uh, to call it Deboots. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, we're making a Saving Private Ryan deboot. What? It's like a reboot, but we're not trying. Yeah. Uh, we're yeah. gonna make it bad on purpose. It's a deboot. <laughs> oh okay. It's gonna be worse. It's like making a, uh, oh, what do they call it? Uh, like a backport. You know how people, uh, pirate game companies will take a, an SNES game and backport it to the NES? You know those things? Yeah, yeah. What do they call those? Uh, D makes. Yeah, D makes, or yeah. Something like that, yeah. It's a D boot. So we're gonna take this movie that was originally good. And we're gonna make it bad, and it's gonna be in 480p as opposed to HD, the original. <laughs> it's gonna look like it came up before the original, is the point. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. Man, like, uh, I wonder. See, we've seen the reaction of changing uh, people's race and uh, gender and like appearance and stuff but what about name we haven't done that yet <laughs> but what about uh make a make a reboot of forrest gump where he's just called like jason zimmerman or something what? yeah uh, uh no make it starring tom arnold <laughs> as uh as mr gump it's not forrest gump no, no. He's referred to only as Mr. Gump for the movie. <laughs> no. no, it's got to be different. <laughs> yeah, It's yeah. got to be bafflingly different. <laughs> I want to make a deboot of Top Gun starring uh, Tom Hanks instead of Tom Cruise. <laughs> and play it off like he is Tom Cruise. Like, make him act like Tom Cruise. Or Tom Hancock. That reminds me, there's a Steven Seagal, like the movies he's been producing for a while. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes he gets a guy called, uh, his last name is Van Damme. Oh, yeah. To be in the movies. Huh. Like in, uh, uh, Operation Sniper something, whatever that sniper movie he made where he didn't do anything in it. Yeah. There's a guy, his, I think his, his name is John Van Damme. And he puts his name on the front of the poster, oh, but yeah. only calls it Van Damme. <laughs> Just to make people think maybe it's John claude Van Damme, yeah. but it's some other Van Damme. Oh my god. It's the stupidest thing. <laughs> like, imagine if someone remade uh, Top Gun, starring Bill Cruz, <laughs> and uh, at the top of the poster... It said, like, half the poster was taken up by... Cruise. Yeah. It was like Cruise, and then the name, the full name of another actor from the old one to give it credence. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Just 
Steven Seagal basically does that, more or less, mm. with this Van Damme guy. It's the stupidest thing. It's greasy. <laughs> oh, you're gonna... Damn it, they ever blow up right there. Oh, man, I'm still sore with that 50 bucks, though. <laughs> it's just so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it just comes at the <laughs> end of the movie. Like, he bet him 50 bucks about something, and then mm. Steven Seagal, basically in Sniper Special Ops or whatever it was, sits in a chair for the 99% of the movie and does nothing. And then at the end, he just comes back to the guy who made the bet with it. Still sorry about that 50 bucks. Still sorry about that 50 bucks. <laughs> oh, God. That's the whole movie. Mm. Just, the plot takes place without him. Yeah. He's not in the movie. Yeah. He basically does something at the beginning and then he sits down. Because <laughs> he's too fat and lazy to do anything. And too inexperienced and goofy looking. And <laughs> doesn't actually play anyone. He just plays himself. And he mm. just wears the same sunglasses between yeah. movies. Establishing a continuity <laughs> yeah. between the movies and the universes. Yeah, yeah. He has to put his own gun collection in the movie. Show it off. Just That's just him showing off his I guns. I know. It has nothing to do with the movie. <laughs> this one was almost 14 rounds. <laughs> or whatever it was. Almost 14 bullets. Wow, almost? You heard me. On a good day, it can store 15. <laughs> <laughs> On humid evenings. <laughs> Get fit in another one. That's a real line, though. Like, he did say it, mm. it holds almost however many bullets he said. It's, it's ridiculous. I forget what movie it was, but... If you just go on YouTube and search in Steven Seagal Stupid or something, <laughs> and then set the filter to, like, like this year, you'll probably get it. And you can't, like, have a uh, fully automatic rifle and the shoulder butt that's supposed to go into your shoulder to balance it. You can't have that above your shoulder. <laughs> like, some guy even was in a thread one time, they were talking about that movie, and he said he was in boot camp, and he accidentally shot his gun like that, mm -hmm. and it, like, almost, like, broke his hand. <laughs> yeah. Like, you cannot shoot your gun like that. And Steven Seagal constantly has the shoulder butt, like, over his shoulder and just flipping it around and then for a brief second the shoulder butt is in line with his face yeah and then flips it around <laughs> that's that's not how you do that you don't switch hands either that's how the special ops does it. oh yeah he's an operator that's right he's a smooth operator You kill a guy with a credit card provided it's been sufficiently uh, modified. <laughs> or whatever the exact thing he said on Reddit that time. Yeah. This is the craziest shit he Sufficiently modified. Everything he says is just retarded. Boost power. Just getting through without dying is so uh, hard. Uh, uh, mission uh, fail. Let me All try. Right. All right, I'm gonna try. God damn. I'm gonna try, you guys, so you can go ahead and skip the rest of the video. <laughs> you might do it. Like you've done a few of them. Yeah. I still have that one under my belt. That one stage. Remember that one? Oh yeah. No. Well, which one? The one where we had to stay above a certain speed. Oh, yeah. Oh. And then we spent, like, ten hours on the first 70% of it, uh -huh. not getting past it. And that one time, I got past it, the last 30% without knowing what was there. And mm -hmm. I somehow just kind of did it. Yeah. <laughs> it was so it. close that I did it. I got that one. I'm going to put that on my gravestone. That's what it's going to say. I did this stage in a Zero GX. There's people that get good at this somehow. 
But it's basically just crazy game nerd or whatever. You should get, you should get a hat that says, uh, I beat this stage in F0GX and all I got is this stupid hat and I even had to make it myself. That's a lot to put on the hat. Well, yeah, you, you, put, it, you put it around the perimeter. I've never seen that before. That's pretty strange. You put it you put it on the uh the duck bill thing. The, <laughs> the visor. Mmm. I want a shirt that says functioning member. I heard that on the Easy Allies podcast. Oh yeah, what? I think. What's the deal with that? I, I, know, I think Kyle said it or something like that. He said he wanted, they're talking about stupid shirts to get. Oh yeah. And he said just to have a shirt that said functioning member. It's like functioning member of society. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't do that. I want a shirt that says potato. <laughs> I want a shirt that just has a picture of a, a potato on it. A potato sack. I'm, in a way, I'm almost glad that I'm not filthy rich because I'd have a house full of uh, custom made t shirts and hats and things. Yeah. At a whim, I'll just make something. Like a shirt that just says, like. I don't know fishing. And that's it. There's no logo, there's no fish on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or challenge accepted. <laughs> Whoa. I'm this ready. guy means business. <laughs> What the hell is he? What are you doing to me? Oh, well, man, the monkey ball engine really makes some strange things happen. Yeah. Which this is, by the way. Yeah, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We never, we never mentioned it before, but this is actually, actually, this is the monkey ball engine. Did you know that Metroid Prime is actually the Unreal Engine? You know that? Wait, is that true? Yeah. Oh, I see. It's just so heavily modified, it took people ten years to find out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How did they find out, though? Just by looking at, like, the variables? Well, yeah, they just decompiled it and figured it out. You know, after, after its run on the GameCube ended and they re-released it on, you know, hardware that was easier to dump and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that's what happened. Actually, water is transparent, not blue. No. Uh, oh. My whole life is a lie. Why did you put dihydrogen monoxide in my glass? Democratic People's Republic of the Congo. <laughs> that's my, uh... That's my bit, folks. There you go. Flotango. Flamingo. <laughs> Botswana. Demilitarized zone. <laughs> <laughs> Bombay. <laughs> That's basically what it comes down to. It's just like do some really out of place scientific observation about something. Yeah. Borneo. Make it really, make it really <laughs> verbose. <laughs> My grandparents are big into uh, Big Bang Theory. And they, they I noticed a lot I noticed about Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Most of the people that watch it are old. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Everyone I know that unfamiliar. watches is an old person. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Is that really... Do they know that's and, their audience? And they find... Like, my grandmother now finds uh, video games inherently funny. Oh. Like, that it's just something... <laughs> like, I'll be playing a game and she'll, like, 
be like, ah, yes, they play those things and uh, Big Bang, that's hilarious. Yeah, Big Bang Theory is basically making fun of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I think people that are actually live that don't think it's funny anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is something they have to well, do. Well, it's kind of... You're it's making fun of my job. It's kind of why I don't like it. It's like... <laughs> It's a it's a toned down version of my life. <laughs> like it's less it's less edgy than my life. And every five seconds somebody just comes on and says Bermuda. <laughs> <laughs> and you just go, Wow man. <laughs> wow. Bojangles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Sheldon is just Mewtwo King. Yeah, he does. He's he looks like it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. He's just like he's just he's just internet, internet celebrity uh, number five thousand autistic fellow number five billion who you hear of on the internet. Ooh, I think I just damage boost. Did. You're not doing too bad. You're in the second lap. Yeah. But, uh, mm. I just. That gets yeah. me every time, too. I yeah. try to stay. When I get to those, I stay along the wall, even taking the damage. I yeah. kind of just try to. I try to stay on the ice. If we were Crazy Game Nerd, or whatever that guy's name is, CGN, mm. you would, like, hit the wall and flip off the wall, and then when you're in midair, keep doing the uh, side swipe attack to get lift. To. J like jump past the stage. Yeah. You ever see that? Where he keeps doing the uh what is it, X button thing is? Yeah. Or Z, I can't remember which one it is, to do the side swipe. And you can keep doing that, like that guy's doing there. Yeah. And you can actually use that to affect your lift. There's mm -hmm. all these crazy air physics in this game that would never be used normally. Like there's no point in it in during normal play, but yet it's there. Like how in, like, Metroid Zero Mission, there's things you can only find by sequence breaking. Right. They're kind of built into the game. Just left it in, there you go. <laughs> you know, in uh, Demon Souls, uh, at the Shrine of Storms, did you know you can skip the whole stage, basically? Ah, oh, And they left that trick in. Yeah. Like, Miyazaki said he found out about it during game testing, and then he decided to leave it in. Because it was so cool. Yeah. You could actually uh, run and jump across a little gap if you timed it right. You did it right. I do it every time now. Skip the stage. And you can skip 90% of the first stage in the Shrine of Storms in Demon Souls. And then go straight to the boss, basically. The uh, Adjudicator. Yeah. Balboa. In Rocky Balboa. <laughs> no. Blast ball. <laughs> you want to do video games now? Okay. Bosconian. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I should have waited until something funny happened and then I actually just said Bosconian. <laughs> uh. You really? Well, unfortunately, my threshold for humor is a little more advanced than yours is. Yours is. Bowling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Bread and water. <laughs> Bastet. But. With two T's. Oh, yeah. And then. Yes. A boot. Butte. <laughs> Ass. Banane. Except I said ass, but that's ass with an E on the end. Oh, yeah. Banane is a good one. In my head, whenever I think about bananas, I'm actually thinking about banane. For some reason. You ever do that? 
with some things. <laughs> yeah. Like, so when I, I think about bologna, I'm thinking about saying the phrase bologna. Yeah, yeah. With bananas, it's bananas. Or I banan. Think, I think everybody deals with that. Yeah. Deals with that affliction. Whenever I think about the past, all I can think about is sitting on the couch during a hot afternoon at 2 p.m. and the sun is coming in through the blinds. Like, so the, so the light is kind of like uh, staggered onto the floor, like. And I can see little air particle things flying through like dog hair. That's my past. Whenever I think about the past, that's all I can think about. <laughs> okay, it's sure. It's just afternoon television. <laughs> And things in the air floating around, I can see in the sunlight. Oh, uh, yeah. That's past. That's, oh. a, that's, that's my idea of the past. Okay. In my mind, it's very strange. <laughs> so, for some reason, I remember certain parts of uh, elementary school being strangely dark. Like, they. Yeah, uh, I remember the. Uh, I remember the room. But I where don't think that was true. I, I think, think uh, I was just interpreting it. No, as being I dark. think that that school was kind of dark because it was when we were going there. It was not long before it was going to be demolished. Yeah, remember that? And uh, well, it I, probably had some things going on. It right? had a dim color scheme. It was like this mm. color scheme of that school was dark brown, if you remember yeah. correctly. And um, I remember specifically the music room was this. It was like a dimly lit, carpeted square room. Remember that? And you just basically played with objects to make sounds. Oh, yeah. A lot of those little shakers. Yeah, yeah. I used to hate that. Junky stuff. <sighs> it fostered an early hatred for music. <laughs> Alright. Like, a school fostered an early hatred for reading and music for me. Uh, cool. And then it took me about a year till I was done school to get into reading and music. Oh, yeah. It just made me hate it. Because they make you do it. Oh, yeah. I hate... I don't like being made to do something on principle, and I don't want to do it. Uh-huh. I concur somewhat. I was thinking of this, an idea for a video for a while where uh, we record us playing something like this, so we get us on video, but then ha the title of the video is like what it's actually like to play video games, and the they, you don't say anything. No, that's not a good idea for no, a video. But nothing is being said, so it's 20 minutes of no one saying anything. No. I mean, why not? That's just like, dumb. Who cares? I don't care if anyone watches it. This is an idea I had. Yeah. Like, I also had an idea for, uh... To, uh... I say... It's kind of difficult, but I had an idea to, uh... Uh... Get... Files for, uh... Basically, like, the first two seasons of, uh, Star Trek The Next Generation. And cut it down to just the scenes where people are sitting on the bridge doing nothing. Oh, yeah. And put it all into one video. Yeah. And then call it what actually happens in Star Trek between episodes. Yeah. And then play some dumb music. This is kind of there. That's not a bad idea. That seems like something I do. So they just, like, sit. Uh -huh. Nobody says anything. I got inspired to do that, actually, for years now, since we were working at the plant over here. And that one time, they were operating PB4. Remember, we weren't doing anything. Yeah. And I finally got to experience what it was like to uh, be right next to something that could just, that could obliterate you, but uh, doesn't do anything. Yeah. And you just have to basically sit there and be there. Yeah. And you can even go to sleep. I imagine that's what it's like on Star Trek. But we only get to see the fun things. Yeah. Which I've always had a penchant for... Uh, trying to come up with a way to uh, 
display accurately the boredom of space. But there's no real venue to do it. Because no one's interested in seeing it but me. And I was just wondering how to really achieve that in a video. Or the boredom of operating something. Yeah. Like, have an hour-long video of someone sitting down. Well, you... You do that in video games. I know, that's why... It's easier to do that kind of thing in video games. If we just said, like... Made an eight-hour-long video of, uh... Some character... You know how in old RPGs, like the 2D ones, you can walk behind the blanket sprite of a bed? And you can sit in bed? Oh, yeah. You should, we make a video of what it's actually like uh, in Chrono's life. Yeah, yeah. And make an eight hour long video of him sl sitting there in bed sleeping. <laughs> it, the reality it, of Chrono Trigger. Call it the Chrono Trigger prequel. <laughs> Before he wakes up. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea. Did anyone do that? That's easy to do, dude. You just gotta leave it record. And make sure you have eight hours worth of space to do everything. I, like, I, I uh... I had this one idea for, uh, like, I, ne I would never do this, but, um, make a compilation of all the times in, uh, JRPGs where you can, uh, save during an important plot moment. Like, or sleep during an important plot moment. <laughs> I so love that. You do that pretty frequently. I love that about, uh, old RPGs where, uh, they had kind of a loose, uh, grasp on their narrative structure yeah. so that the world's ending but I can go uh, to the arcade and just dick around for like three days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. That's going away and slowly this... with games. Like Their <coughs> their plot is informing what you can do yeah. in games now which is bothering me. Like I like to be able to like the world is about to end and right before the last boss this little guy set up shop and I still have to buy things. Yeah. <laughs> For no and, it, and it costs more than usual. <laughs> and you're like, I'm gonna save your life. Nope. You wanna buy this potion? It's still they're gonna sell it to you at a premium. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. <laughs> and nowadays you would think it was out of place, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa what's whoa. happening? Holy shit. I'm just driving. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> we got to remember that's there and just cut it down to that. Yeah. <laughs> Something happened. 